Hello everybody, I'm Raphael Perry and it's time once again to get back into the driving seats, rev up those engines and go brum 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 down the highway in Freeway Fighter. Now, here we are at the garage and I'd like to take, or garage if you're posh, or wait, no, garage if you're northern, garage if you're southern, right, yeah. So here we are in the garage and I would like to take a moment to appreciate exactly how cunning and layered this particular encounter is. So let's look at this. Let's break it down piece by piece, just before I dive right in here. At the start of the adventure, I picked up a clue. I met a man who said, don't stop at the garage. They don't have any petrol. They're just going to try to rob you. So I know that it is a trap, if what he said is true. And we'll come to back, to back to that in a little bit. Let's pretend I didn't get the warning. Let's pretend that I didn't get the warning, I drove up to the garage and I thought, ooh, you know what, I haven't gone particularly far, I don't really need to refill yet, but maybe I can get another can of petrol there to refill later on. And I drove in there and they robbed me, right? And then I go, oh, I don't want to go here again. Let's avoid this place, right? I can't remember if I can get a can of petrol if I survive the ambush or not. I think while I'm talking to her, another man comes around with a shotgun and, like, pokes it through the window, points it in my face, and is like, oi, give me all your money, you know. And it's not good. I think it's not an automatic death. It's possible to survive and to get something out of this encounter, but not very much, and I don't believe it's petrol. So, we'll come back to that in a bit, right? Let's uh, pretend this is a map or something, right? And we're starting here, and we're going up here. So we start here. We drive along a bit. We come to this first mark here let's call that the petrol station and we go oh we're not going to stop here either i stop here and have the encounter or i just drive off and don't stop here right if i have the warning i'm slightly more likely to not stop here then i go further on maybe i rescue the town elder maybe i don't i don't think that not rescuing him will get me more petrol but we'll come back to that again in a bit right then I get to the part where I need to refill my petrol. And I use up my petrol can. I drive on even further. Run out of petrol again. Need to refill. Don't have any. So this is where the layers come in. Because I think about the petrol station back at the beginning. And I think... Maybe I could have got some petrol there. Right? Because knowing that I need to find some more petrol before this point in the story means maybe this is where I could find it, right? Because I couldn't find any in the um, ambulance. Couldn't find any rescuing the town elder. And here, at the bridge, just before I ran out of petrol, I found the, the hose pipe for siphoning petrol from another vehicle, which I'm pretty sure I will need later on. So I'm fairly certain that is the direction I do need to go. Which means, whichever side branches I take off, they need to be able to lead back to here. So, there's a meta here. You know, the petrol meta of needing more meta. The meta is, did you get the warning in the first place or not? And if you got the warning or not, did you stop at the petrol station or not? And if you didn't stop at the petrol station, you drive on and you get to the points where you need more petrol and you think back to the petrol station. So the next time you play, you're more tempted to go there. So this is a very alluring trap. And I'm not talking about the picture of the lovely young lady here. Because the trap is that you want to stop at the petrol station and try and get some petrol. But you also know that you shouldn't and there must be another way to find some. But you don't find any. And every time you don't find any, you run out of petrol. You want to come back to the petrol station next time. 
and you think maybe I'll stay and every time you drive pr through there you think maybe I will just stop and check this out perhaps they won't rob me after all and and maybe the first time you drive through you come up to a petrol station you rock up you think oh, I've got a full tank of belly just started I don't need to to fill up here and you drive off then next time you get the warning, you're like, oh, hey, well, I'm glad I didn't stop there. And you carry so, yeah, yeah, there's lots of layers to this. And I appreciate, I mean, this is a completely out of character meta trap plot lure. But it's very cleverly paced right at the beginning. If it was placed further on down the line, further in the adventure, then you'd think, well, hey, maybe I missed some petrol earlier that I could have got anyway. But being right near the beginning... You couldn't have missed very much. Let's continue. You're soon out of town, zigzagging around wrecked cars and fallen trees along the road. Further ahead, you can see that the road joins the main highway south. There is a small filling station at the junction named Joe's Garage. You stop as you're intrigued by the hot rod parked around the side, looking clean and in running condition. A young woman suddenly comes out of the office wearing a t-shirt and blue jeans. She smiles and says, Hi, can I help you? Shall we talk to her and fall into the trap and get ambushed? Probably not. Or drive on up the highway. I'll drive on away for now. Despite the hazard of having to avoid abandoned cars, the highway is wide enough for you to gather plenty of speed. It's exciting to drive so freely without fear of being hauled in by the police for violating some traffic regulation or another. You smile as your speed reaches 190 kilometers per hour, but your joy is short-lived. You suddenly see a red Chevrolet, heavily reinforced with steel plating, coming straight towards you. Somebody is sitting in a small turret on the roof, a machine gunner. You think to yourself that maybe having to deal with the police in the old days wasn't so bad compared with what is coming at you now. You breathe in deeply and get ready to press the machine gun fire button. Let's get some car-to-car -car combat. We got our Dodge Interceptor against the Red Chevy. Must not waste rockets. Fire away. Oh, that's not a good start for us, is it? We're on two diff, so... Yeah, we're taking damage. A lot of damage. Got the upper hand there, though. Come on. Oh, yeah. Six back. Even Stevens on the damage front. And we win by virtue of our superior firepower. Daka, daka, daka. Go kill. Go kill. This could be it. No, the red Chevy's still got another round in it. Uh oh. We're going to take some fire back. Oh man, those heavy, hard hitting bullet shots. And wow, we got it now. Unless we roll a one. We didn't roll a one. Five and six chance of victory. You stop your interceptor to examine the burning wreck. Who were these people and why did they attack you without warning? You shake your head and hit the accelerator, eager to reach your destination. So nothing to salvage? Okay. You're passing a security truck and thinking about all the money inside it, which is now useless, when suddenly a voice crackles, comes through on your radio above the crackling static. It is one of the New Hope's leaders. She tells you that a gang of bikers have just attacked New Hope, killing eight people in the process. After a short battle, they were initially beaten off. She warns you to be on the lookout for them as they have kidnapped Sinclair, the council leader. I think... Rescuing Sinclair isn't a red herring. It isn't a... Mm, tricky. You acknowledge the message and say goodbye. After an hour or so of driving without any further incident, you notice that your petrol gauge is dropping. The interceptor is very heavy on petrol. So we've still got quite a bit. If it's very heavy. Hmm. Huh. You stop and pour the contents of the fuel canister into the tank, realizing that you will have to find some more petrol soon. And we really will. A few kilometers further and you know that your luck has really run out. 
There must have been a car crash at the time of the disaster, which caused a huge tailback of now abandoned cars. It is impossible to continue along the highway. You reverse back to the last exit and drive off the highway. East or west? Um. East will be to hang on. Biking our tank, Cloak Sinclair. Um. East, I think, will take us to the rescue. And I think I said I wanted to try the second west after the rescue. But maybe west here will help us. Ooh. The road heads directly west, and you are able to travel along it quickly as it is relatively free of obstacles. However, your easy drive is short-lived. The road comes to a river, which it uses to used to cross, but the drawbridge that spans the river is partly open, stopping you from driving across it. You judge that if you drive over it at about 180 km per hour, the momentum should carry the interceptor across the gap to the far side, but then again, it might not. Yeah, look, um, that's really risky. Maybe I should just go back. Um, let's go back. Before too long, you are back at at the bridge which crosses the highway. You continue east along the road. You pass an ambulance parked off the road to your right, but you see no sign of life. I don't remember there being anything particularly... We could get a few things out of it after the fight, like a set of... Not, not the handcuffs, something else. Let's just keep driving east, because it is seriously booby-trapped. You flash past a road sign which shows a turning to the south immediately ahead. Um, that'll take us back in the direction we want. Fighting with fancy rule says don't go south. The road is open and wrecked cars are an infrequent hazard. The speedometer reads well above the maximum speed limit that is used to control the road. But you know that there is no chance of getting a speeding ticket now. Your enjoyment, however, is short-lived. A roadblock of upturned cars and trucks comes into view. You slow down and survey the scene, sensing danger. Um, drive around the roadblock. Turn and go back down. So, so that's an option to go back and go the other way. That's the second time we've had a go back option. If we take those to mean this is dangerous and we shouldn't go this way, or are you really sure you don't want to go the other way? So these can either be deterrents, or they can be trying to steer us back onto the path. I'll stick with firing a rocket at the roadblock. Admittedly, this is fairly similar to the last few patterns so far, but I'm exploring, right? Look at that carnage. Bits of car doors flying out there. Absolutely mental. Reaching forward, you press the rocket launcher button on the control panel. The interceptor shakes as the rocket is fired, and the explosion which follows immediately is loud and blinding. When the smoke clears, you see that the roadblock no longer exists. Suddenly, you hear the roar of a motorcycle engine starting up and see two leather-clad armed riders appear from behind a bush and blaze up the road through the hole in the roadblock. The passenger turns and fires a warning shot at you and the bikes races away. Uh, drive after them or let them get away? No, I'll chase after them. I think letting them get away could just cause more troubles in the long run, because also this leads me back towards their base a bit, doesn't it? Before you have time to catch them, you turn around and drive straight to they turn around and drive straight towards you. In which case, glad I didn't decide to let them get away. The machine gun above the headlamp blazes red and white as it spits out bullets at you. You press the accelerator hard down on the floor and race the interceptor towards them. Your fingers clutching the machine gun trigger. Let's play chicken. Bikers! Get shot! Oh, five power six. We're at a serious disadvantage. Oh, yes. Keep firing there, Jake. Driving, swerving, bum bashing them maybe with the back end of the car. You know, we like do like the handbrake turn, like, boop, with the back end. Yeah, probably not that. deal the damage. Uh, so far so good. Our machine's in reasonably good nick. Yeah, I'm just blow him away. 
second button? No. You walk over to Wreck Bike, carrying your revolver in one hand and a medkit in the other. One of the men is dead and the other is barely alive. You kick his pistol away from him and see if he can be saved. He opens his eyes, smiles and says, Fat Jack and the boys will get you for this. Then he slumps back and is still. Your medkit cannot help him. You check the bike over and notice a locked side pannier, which we are going to blatantly open. You fire up a lock on the pannier. Three shots and it's open. Inside, you, that's a sturdy lock by Hollywood standards. <laughs> or a realistic lock, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Inside, you find a pair of handcuffs, a map and 200 credits. After putting the handcuffs and credits in your jacket pocket, you look at the map. There is a red circle drawn around New Hope. Obviously, these men come from, came from the same gang that attacked New Hope. A small town named Rockville is marked with a red cross and is not too far southeast from where you are now. No doubt it is the temporary home of the bikers. You decide to change the wheel on your interceptor before any of the bikers' friends arrive, so we put our spare wheel on. Got it. Fortunately, the wheel hub is not damaged, and you're able to fit the spare wheel quite quickly. I don't think I needed to. I hadn't taken damage. I, I used the rocket on the... So why... Hmm. Odd. Perhaps a bit of a logic flaw there? Hmm. You're soon charging down the road, shaking your head at the mad world you are now forced to live in. You soon arrive at another signpost, which points down a narrow dirt track towards a town called Rockville, which we are going to go towards. The dirt track is rough and bumpy, and you realise that people from miles around will see the dust that the speeding interceptor is throwing up. Nevertheless, you are determined to reach Rockville. Suddenly, you see a blinding flash on top of a boulder in the distance, and we must test our luck. Oh yeah, that's very lucky. Which is good, because Jake... No, not bookmark. Not bookmark. Jake has terrible luck this time round. Somebody has fired a bazooka at you, but the shell explodes harmlessly a few meters to your left. Perfect! You press down on the accelerator, steering the interceptor towards your attackers, but before you can reach them, they jump onto their bikes and race off. Uh, Rose back to... No, I'm absolutely going to give chase. Brum, 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 brum. The bikes are suited to driving along the dirt track, and you're unable to catch up with them. In the distance, you see a cluster of houses, which must be Rockville. The bikes drive straight towards the houses and disappear from view. As you get closer, you hear the sound of gunfire, which seems to be coming from the nearest farmhouse. We absolutely have our rocket launcher. Let's do this. The farmhouse is an easy target, and the rocket does not miss. The explosion destroys the farmhouse, sending fragments of brick and wood flying through the air. When the dust has settled, you drive cautiously ahead, one finger against the machine gun trigger. You stop alongside the farmhouse, but see no signs of life. You turn off the engine and wind down the window of the interceptor. You hear the desperate cry of a man calling for help, and we're absolutely going to go help the guy. You walk over towards the sound of the cry for help and find that it is coming from inside a shack attached to the general store. You ask who is inside the shack. It's Sinclair, New Hope's council leader. You search around and find an iron bar to prize open the lock of the door. Soon Sinclair is free, and we got a luck point back. Hooray! Sinclair tells you about the raid on New Hope and his kidnapping. He asks you to radio to New Hope to tell them that he will return by motorbike as soon as possible. Now, this was going out of our way to rescue him, and it doesn't necessarily get us very much. And we, we might be thinking we should be all about the mission, so I'm not sure this was a good idea. This is still an excursion I'm willing to make, but other routes are worth bearing in mind in the future. There are two bikes parked in front of the general store, of which he chooses the old Harley Davidson. Thanking you for your help, he waves goodbye and roars off north. I will search the general store. Inside the general store, you find a can of meat which you greedily devour, not having eaten such a rare delicacy for a long time. You get two stamina points back. More importantly, you find a full canister of petrol which you stow inside the interceptor. Right, so... We got ourselves a fuel can again. That's great. So coming here does get us our first petrol can. Meaning 
it is worthwhile in theory. Our heroic act was rewarded. If you've not done so already, you may search for nearest house. I will absolutely do that. You open the front door of a house and step inside. I should have come in here first. Leading off the hallway, there are two doors facing each other, left or right. I hope it's not the crossbow. The door opens into a room that has recently been occupied. There are unfinished cups of coffee on the table and the front wheel of a motorcycle propped up against the wall, its inner tube lying on the floor. Somebody was obviously in the process of mending a puncture. There's also a toolkit on the table, inside which you find a pair of heavy-duty wire cutters which you decide to take with you. These may be extremely useful later on. We can open the door to the room opposite. Not a good idea. It's booby-trapped. Let's leave the house. And there's nothing else to do except drive off south. So far, so good. The dirt track twists and turns through the open countryside, but at last you come to a T-junction where the dirt track is crossed by a good road. You look down at both ways, but do not see any vehicles or signs of life. I did say I wanted to take the second west after this rescue. So we'll head east. The road heads directly east and you are able to travel along it without incident until you reach another T-junction. Here you decide to turn right in order to drive south towards San Anglo. This is a, this is a dead end, you're not going any further this way kind of situation, right? Um, just all house, yeah, so. South or west? What I'm wanting to do is right on St. Louis sidecar overturn this. I need to get to the laughing man. Oh. Ah. Interesting. The road cuts through overgrown fields, but there are no obstructions. You check your mileometer to see how far you have come and notice that the petrol gauge is ready, reading empty again. Have I taken like a massive leak from all the gunfighting or is it just sheerly the, the massive distances involved in the travel? If you've picked up a fuel canister during your journey, I absolutely have. You break to a halt and get out of the car to empty the fuel canister into the petrol tank. The canister does not hold much petrol and you realise that you will have to be on the lookout for more if you hope to reach San Anglo. By the time you set off again, it is early evening and you watch the setting sun through the right hand window. Soon it will be dark and there is a new decision to make. We can drive off the road and sleep the night inside the interceptor or drive through the night. Um, my gut feeling is that drive through the night, big mistake, let's just avoid that for now. You pull off the road and park the interceptor behind a row of bushes. When you turn the engine off, you realise how quiet it is outside and wonder if anybody heard you stop. You decide not to go to sleep until it is totally dark and spend a long time eating your makeshift evening meal. When you are finally convinced that nobody is now likely to find you, you stretch out and go to sleep. In the morning, you wake early, feeling refreshed. Perhaps driving for the night would have got us to somewhere to some source of petrol which has moved on. Oh! Perhaps the overturned interceptor has petrol which we can get if we drive through the night, but if we wait till morning, someone's already siphoned it out. There's an interesting thought. You waste no time and drive back on the road to head south. As you're beginning to enjoy the freedom of the open road in the early morning light, you are suddenly startled by the sight in your rearview mirror of a vehicle closing up on you. It is an armoured car and you see a jet of flame flash from its gun barrel as a shell is fired at you. It explodes to your left, rocking the car, but you are able to keep control. Drop iron spikes or oil spray? Right. Oil spray or slip and slide, iron spikes, a bit more random. More importantly, 
two oil spray, three iron spikes. Um. Flame from the gun barrel. Oil. I'm not sure it'll get up to the gun barrel. I'll just go with the spikes. Oh, damn luck. <laughs> You press the button on the dashboard which releases the canister. The iron spikes are spread all over the road and you watch the armoured car driving towards them in your mirror. Oh, bugger. Well, Jake's luck has run out. The driver of the armoured car is alert and swerves the car off the road to avoid the spikes. It powers its way through the overgrown grass verge and bounces back onto the road to continue the chase. Sure, we'll spray some oil all over the road. You lean forward and press the button on the dashboard, which releases the oil spray. The armoured car drives straight over the oil slick, and you watch with amusement as the driver struggles to control the skidding vehicle. How do we do? Okay, there's a 1 in 6 chance of something different. The driver... Oh, so he had a 1 in 6 chance of controlling it, maybe? The driver is unable to control the skidding armoured car, and it turns off the road into a ditch. You smile and accelerate away, leaving behind the immobilised vehicle. Maybe I should have fought it out and seen if I could get something out of them. As the morning wears on, it becomes very hot and you notice a change in the vegetation the further south you travel. The overgrown fields turn into scrubland and it won't be long before you are driving along the, across the desert. A few miles further down the road, you arrive at a major junction. You can turn right to head west or keep driving south. I said this was where I wanted to go west. Which is away from a laughing man, admittedly. That's a problem. Oh well. You drive about 80 kilometers and then the road ends at a T-junction. You decide to turn left in the direction of San Anglo and we're running low on petrol. Leading off the road to your right is a rough road which is marked with several sets of tire tracks. The tracks look as if they were made quite recently. They might have petrol. Gonna live dangerously here. Already running on empty. Hey, I know this picture. Wow, it's been a long time since I last saw this. You drive along the bumpy road until you come to a wooden gate which bars the way. Maybe I can buy petrol from him. I mean, the guy's got a gun, so he doesn't look particularly friendly. The gate is covered with barbed wire and a heavy tattooed bare-chested man sits casually astride it, brandishing a machine gun. In a gruff voice, he says, I don't recognise you. Which gang are you from? Black rats, you reply on the spur of a moment. I've never heard of them, a man replies. Still, we'll race against anybody. Follow the road down to the burnt-out house and you'll see the other cars parked there. The first race will start in about five minutes. There are some pretty heavy bets being laid today. Should be lots of fun. Um... Can I bet for petrol? Following the instructions of the tattooed man, you drive down the dirt road to the burnt out house. Something's telling me this was probably the wrong place to go. Four customized cars are parked in a row, each sprouting a multitude of weapons. A group of people stands in a heated discussion, although they all turn to watch you park. You walk over to the group and ask them about the forthcoming race. The smallest man, with a scar running the length of his face, smiles and says, Rookie, huh? Never been to a blitz race before? Listen, it's quite simple. Challenge any of us to a race. You have to bet 200 creds, but if you win, the prize is a big can of petrol. If you win, that is. Oh, hey, look at that. The man bursts into laughter and others join in. Well, yeah, sure, challenge him to a blitz race. I need the petrol hope this doesn't involve luck. You take your 200 credits out of your pocket and thrust them towards a man with a scar. Didn't we find 200 credits really early on? So actually we're kind of quids in, you know, just even as it were. He snatches them from you and says, there's a sucker born every minute. Get in your car. Let's do it. We race for eight kilometers down the dirt road, turn around at the White House and race back. And remember, there are no holds barred in a blitz race except rock bullets and rockets. So we're allowed to crap. I've got road spikes and oil slicks. 
You climb inside the interceptor and start it up and crawl forward to the starting line. Your opponent draws alongside you in his bright yellow Ford. Wait, bright yellow Ford? Is that a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy reference? I can't remember what colour the Ford that Ford Prefect saw was. You see that it is armed with two machine guns and a grenade launcher. Hey, no holds barred except bullets and rockets. So we're not allowed to... But he's got guns on the car. A young woman standing in between the two cars raises a white towel into the air and then suddenly pulls it down to signal the start of a race. Let's go. Uh-oh, skill. Uh, skill 10. Good odds. In theory. Oh, yeah. You stamp down on the accelerator and release the clutch at the same time. The back wheels spin, throwing up dust, but you race off ahead of the yellow Ford. In your rearview mirror, you see the anger on your opponent's face as he drives to the limit allow along the narrow road to catch up with you. The Ford must be supercharged. It accelerates up behind you and rams your car at high speed. Well, I don't have a lot of luck. Oh, God, just enough, though. Hey, how come I didn't get my point of luck back for rescuing... Elder... Uh, what was his name? That's odd. The interceptor swerves to the left, but you steer into the skid and keep the car under control. You have to think quickly to decide which tactics to use. Accelerate away or brake to let him go past. Um, and then ram him from behind. Let's brake. Think tactically here. You slam on the brakes and screech almost to a halt. The forward swerves around you and is soon accelerating away from you. If you're not allowed to use your forward firing weapons, you decide to ram the forward. Yeah. Ford slows down for a bend in the road, but you keep your brake down hard, your foot down hard on the accelerator. You crash into the back of the Ford, but only succeed in damaging the interceptor. Your car loses two armor points. That's okay, we keep on going. The Ford has steel-plated crash bars built to withstand ramming. You realize that you'll have to overtake the Ford in order to use your rear missile weapons. As though he has read your mind, the Ford's driver starts to swing the car from side to side to stop you passing. It will take considerable manoeuvring skill to pass him. Let's do it go! Ooh! Ooh this is that moment where, like, you know, if this were a film, there'd be, like, slow motion as we just veer really close, screaming past the side, a hair's breadth away. You make as if to pass the forward on its left-hand side, but suddenly swerve to overtake on the right. It is a successful maneuver, and you are able to accelerate away from your opponent. You decide that it is time to use a weapon against the chasing car, so you look at the buttons on the dashboard. A canister of iron spikes or a film of oil over the road. Um, thing is, we've got to turn around and come back. That's the problem. Sod it. Oil. Oh, bugger. The oil sinks into the, into the dirt-covered road and has no effects on the car behind. You lose a luck point. Oh, we are so screwed. The driver of the Ford retaliates by firing a grenade over your car to land on the road in front of you. There is a muffled explosion as the steel-plated under-chassis takes the full blast of the grenade. Oh, no, that's a lot of damage. Except it's only four. Still racing, you see ahead of you the white houses... White house that you must where you must turn around. You jam on the brakes and turn the steering wheel sharply to the left. You reverse for a few meters in a cloud of churned up dust and then slam the gear stick forwards into first to race back to the finishing line. The Ford makes an equally swift U-turn and is soon right behind you again. It powers alongside you and the driver pulls down his steering wheel in order to sideswipe the interceptor. He also looks to... He looks set to determine the outcome of this duel by ramming. During this combat, a successful ram will reduce a car's armor by two points, as opposed to the normal method of... Oh, dear. Well, we got a slightly better vehicle. I believe that's a draw. Keep at it. Oh, damage. Woo! They're just, like, streaming along side by side, just missing each other. Oh, yes! This is going to be slow. We bumped him. Keep on bumping. The combat has lasted long enough. Really? Oh no, that's not good. There's probably about a kilometer to go before you cross the finishing line and you are still locked up in combat alongside the Ford. 
Up ahead, the narrow road the road narrows to one lane to cross a narrow stone bridge spanning the stream. Keep your accelerator pressed to the floor. Nah, he's probably going to do that. Ease off the accelerator and allow him to take the lead. Why would I do that? He's got good rear defense. Oh, damn, this is tough. One of us is going in the river, I think. It's a battle of nerves between yourself and the driver of the Ford. To determine your racing skill, you must roll one die. This number is removed from your skill values, so try to roll low to keep the number as high as possible. Oh, bugger. The two cars race abreast across towards the bridge. Your racing skill value is six. You have a chance to win this. You must now determine your opponent's racing skill by rolling another die. This number is removed from their skill value of eight. Please, oh bollocks. Absolute draw. Is your racing skill higher than the Ford driver? No, it's a bloody draw! You're only a few meters away from the bridge when your nerves crack. You brake hard and watch the Ford race over the bridge ahead of you. Pressing down on the accelerator, you try to catch up, realizing your racing skill is no match for theirs. You see the finishing line ahead, but no more than 200 meters away and know that the race is lost. The Ford crosses the finishing line a car's length ahead of the interceptor. You lose a luck point and must turn to 234. I think we need to win the petrol can here to be able to continue. A small group of spectators gather around the Ford to congratulate the driver. You drive past him slowly, waving in salute of his victory, but do not stop. You are bitterly disappointed about losing the race and are keen to drive back to the main road and head south. You flash past a handwritten sign which reads, Pete makes engines sweep, one mile to the left. You slow down and you approach a stone building with a corrugated iron workshop attached to it, which has the words Spark Plug Pete's painted on a billboard on top of the roof. There are a few cars parked on the forecourt. As you come to a halt, a pale, a thin pale man appears from the workshop wearing an oily blue mechanics overall and a baseball cap. He waves and says, Nice car. Pretty fast, I guess, but not as fast as old Pete can make it. If you're interested, I like payment in credits and goods. I'll do a good job for you. Sounds like a standard patter. Um... What can he do? I mean, he could give me petrol. That'd be really great. <laughs> you drive on to Pete's forecourt and park the interceptor alongside the workshop. Pete quickly examines the engine and says that the ac acceleration of the interceptor could be improved with the addition of a supercharger. He tells you that the cost will be 100 credits plus some medicine. You know what? Ten up full on med kit? Sure. You settle down to relax in the shade while Pete busily sets to work on the engine. He taps and bangs away, whistling happily. You drift in and out of light sleep. Two hours later, he slams down the reinforced engine cover and says, OK, she's ready to roll. After giving Pete the 100 credits and two packs of medical supplies, you start up the interceptor and accelerate away as fast as possible. You can feel the extra acceleration in your back and you smile contentedly. Pete has done a good job. You gained one luck point. Now, I don't no, if we got a thing to say, yeah. Uh, Light that you remember of a gang. Sinclair's uh, didn't stop it. Yeah. Okay. So nothing. Anything on the dodge interceptor? Say this, because this could do absolutely nothing, right? Modification supercharger. Okay, we got something. We didn't get our luck point back. Why are we not gaining luck, game? That's, uh, that's sus. Nope, we're definitely not getting it. It wasn't waiting for me to go on to the next section. It's not long before the green vegetation gives way to more barren terrain, with tufts of earth of dry grass dotted on top of the stony brown earth. You soon arrive at the edge of the desert, where the road is joined by another main road leading east. Uh, drive off to the left or keep going south. Um, we're here. Can we get back to the Laughing Man somehow? Wait, which way are we going? We are going... Joined by another road leading east. So left, east or keep going south. Um... South or west? Oh, 
Aha. Um. So west, south, or east, east, west. Let, let's try that road to the east, okay? You drive along the edge of the desert for about 80 kilometers until you arrive at a major inter Hang on, have I been here before? This sounds very familiar, this section. The road ahead is blocked with abandoned cars, so you decide to turn right to head south again. Bloody hell. And we don't have a can of petrol, so we are screwed once again. Okay, that's unfortunate. But I do now know where I can get an extra can of petrol, even though it means missing out on the... Um, on the rubber pipe. I think what I'll do, possibly, is experiment a little bit um, off camera, and when I know where I'm going in terms of getting that extra petrol can, then record another episode. Because otherwise I'm just going to be crawling through the same material over and over again, and that might get a bit boring. Um, haven't fully decided yet, I might just dive straight in next time, but for now I think we'll stop right here, let the engine purr to a halt, and we'll just look at Jake's burnt out interceptor on the side of the road. Well, not burnt out, just empty engine and think, better luck next time, Jake. And as for all of those of you who've watched this episode, I hope you've enjoyed the drive along with me. And I'll look forward to seeing you all in the next one. Let me know if you'd like me to, like, find out where that bloody petrol can that I need to get hold of is or not. And, um... Comment sections down below. Feel free to use it. And I'll see you all in the very next episode. I'm going to say goodbye for now, though, and see you all next time. Cheerio, everyone.